Senator Padilla, thanks uh, for joining us today. I'm going to slip out and take a phone call. Senator Lummich, you're recognized, and I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Thanks. thanks for joining us. Good to see you again, Director Williams. Uh, during your confirmation hearing, uh, I used the entirety of my time to visit with you about the greater Yellowstone grizzly. Um, and I'm going to start with a question about that again today uh, because it's so critical to my state. Um, so my first question is, will the service follow the statutory deadline set by the ESA to respond to Wyoming's Greater Yellowstone Grizzly delisting petition within 12 months with a, statute, with a status review and recommendation? The, these timelines are really important to us. Senator Lamas, thank you for that question, and I um, enjoyed visiting with you on this issue because it's one that's very near and dear to my heart as well, and and have you know very much appreciate the efforts of your state and the leadership they've shown, um, especially recently with grizzly bear uh, recovery efforts. We did receive, the Fish and Wildlife Service did receive a petition from the state of Wyoming, as you mentioned. We also received from the, one from the state of Montana and one from the state of Idaho. They are similar, but not entirely the same. Uh, no surprise there. And we are currently working on all three of these petitions. And I'm aware, certainly aware of the, the deadlines that the <laughs> Endangered Species Act sets out. Well, and the reason for my asking the question, of course, is that the service has already missed an initial 90-day deadline. Uh, and if you're trying to bundle um, our petition with uh, Montana and Idaho, I want to encourage you to respond to Wyoming's petition alone and on its own merit, uh, because doing them together will slow things down for us so incredibly and uh, make it even more difficult for us to address uh, the ongoing issues uh, as this issue is slow walked and not dealt with uh, in a manner that I believe would be contemplated under the act. So um, is it your intention to address them all three together? Or are you willing to address the Wyoming petition as a standalone? Senator Lummis, I, I don't think I can answer that perfectly for you. I, I know that, um, well, our regional office, are they're working on this, and I um, have not been engaged at the moment, nor should I be, and that this, you know, is a scientific review at this point, other than I know that they're working on these what I, I I understand your request, and it's something that I will ask, and I can go back and look at. And, and I understand your request also because I think the issues are somewhat similar in the three states, and yet they are distinct. And I think that as you look at the grizzly bear recovery amongst all three states in the lower 48, um, they are complicated and um, maybe different than just Wyoming's petition alone. So yeah, I hear you. your request and we'll look into it. Well, the, the, as you know, the geographic area, the geography around Yellowstone uh, does tend to uh, keep grizzly bears uh, within certain areas um, that, from which they do not stray. They don't Sometimes they don't go into the other states adjacent just because of simple geography. So please, um, I, I implore you to respond to Wyoming's petition alone and on its own merits. Okay, my next question is similar to uh, Senator Kramer's, and that is uh, people in Wyoming are concerned about uh, this 30 by 30 plan. Um, and of course, NEPA requires that any major federal action undergo analysis. Um, do you believe that 30 by 30 should undergo NEPA analysis? Senator Lummis, um, as I uh, answered to Senator Kramer, and I mean to be consistent, I think that is a question more for the Council on Environmental Quality than for me. But what I can say, too, is 
I view the America the Beautiful initiative, um, and if you look at its underlying principles, it, it sets out principles, it sets out a way of undertaking actions, and any specific actions that the Fish and Wildlife Service would undertake. Um, as a result of it, we, I'm sure that trigger NEPA, we would do so. An example of what the Fish and Wildlife Service already did in the America the Beautiful, I think, infuses um, or amplifies is our partners for fish and wildlife work. So it, I don't think the America the Beautiful changes that work. It only, um, I think, amplifies and encourages a way of, of collaborative, locally-led voluntary conservation. Mr. Chairman, can I have a quick follow-up? I know I'm running over. No, no, you're fine. Go okay. Um, it, it would be so helpful to the people I represent to have a legally cited explanation uh, for why potentially changing the use of hundreds of millions of acres is not a major federal action. Uh, we're... When an initiative is announced that is hugely consequential for the West, yet it doesn't have the normal framework uh, that is used to have interaction and public input and dialogue um, in, in a state like mine that is half federal land, it's, you know, it's scary. So um, how can we get something in writing? Should I ask the EQ? Am I asking the wrong person today? Senator Lummis, what I would say, what I can answer is I would be more than happy to work with you and work with you in the state of Wyoming so that we can be, hear from people. We want to be transparent and I'm you know, happy to address any concerns and opportunities that there are around us. So I, I'd be willing to work with you on this and in Wyoming specifically. Thanks, Director Williams. It's it's a it's a thing that people fear in Wyoming. And you know, you hate to see when you have this grandiose uh, aspirational program, America the Beautiful, and the American people are afraid of it, then there's a disconnect that we need to resolve. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. You bet.